Okay, Thursday Thursdays in the kingdom, and I'm not sure if they brought beer yesterday, because we have no contact with Johnny's replacement while he's on holidays. He's out on the west coast, the west coast, enjoying all the smoke and the rain and the sunshine, I guess. Oh, well, his credit card will be hurting when he gets back. He might have to have a GoFundMe or pick beer cans along the way, because he's having too good of a holiday. All right, this morning at 8 o'clock... Yeah, I got up at 6 for a pee, and then I forgot to mark everything down, eh? Okay, it's 8 o'clock this morning, plus 11 Celsius, but feels like plus 10. Yes, and the yo-yo scale, plus 52 Fahrenheit, but feels like 50. Oh, yeah, those are some high numbers. Sounds impressive. It's like drinking Bud Light. <laughs> okay. Yeah, last night it rained at 1 o'clock in the morning. How do I know it rained? Because I have a tin roof on the house. Yeah, tink, 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 tink. Oh, it was a nice rain all night. As you can see, the ground is kind of dry because it's absorbed it. Yeah, just like them farmers, it absorbed it. Yes, it was a nice farmer's rain. It was nice, just nice tinkle tinkle on the roof, whatever. Oh, it was so relaxing. I had my window open slightly. Yes, but it's chilly. Yes, yesterday we finished up after working hard and then went in the house and finished a video and basically fought with the iPod to transfer the pictures onto the external drive. Yes, it was having issues. So Miss iPod spent, wasted, what, four hours of my life it was unreal. Yesterday I couldn't make long videos because I didn't have any memory space on the iPod. Not up here, okay? All right. It's always fresh up here because it's what I re what I learned today I forget. So there's lots of memory space. Okay. All right. The breeze is getting up. I don't know. All right. Look at the cats. Yes. Oh, yes. This Kansas V plow, it came from Kansas. A fellow there, his name is Oren Stevens. Yeah, Stevens. I think it's Stevens. It was painted on the V-plow. But it was in Kansas, this blade, this V-plow. So to get it to Canada, they cut it in half. Yeah. So in 2004, it showed up in Canada. So I went south and picked it up and brought it up. And then I had to weld it back together. I don't know if we can see the welds, but I'm a good welder. See, I did it up hand. Okay. So it took me quite a while to get it to fit the D69U known as the Bismarck. Because the blade, or the V-plow, is not for that cat. So thought was required, plus beverage, okay? All right. Oh, there's a breeze. Okay. We moved everything around here. So everything's getting laid out on the gravel pad. As if we're going to do filming or something. I don't know. We're just trying to line stuff up so the yard looks organized. Yeah, for my estate auction. Don't ask me the date, because I won't be there. Okay, if you guys figured it out. All right, there's the ramp boat. We parked it there. Yes, it's a petroleum tank, like the tank sheds, and we built a boat. Yes, it was four days of heavy drinking. We came up with a boat, and then we took it out on Reindeer Lake and put it in storage on the bottom of the lake for seven years. That's a minor detail. We got to do a video on that when I'm sober. Okay, over here, we're getting stuff organized. Yes, Thor the plow truck is still here because Sir Rodney doesn't need the $10 commission. Yes, just like Getty Lee from Rush, he doesn't need the $10 right now. But maybe next week he might. So hopefully the sale of the uh, Thor the plow truck goes through. If not, we're going to pop the blades off and then use it as a dump truck around the kingdom because we want the yard smoothed out. Yes, smooth. Just look at that. It's so clean. Yes, I did that all by myself. I'm still surprised at how well those items came apart. But yeah, but they've been sitting there for 26 years or whatever, you know, as inventory. And then when you start cutting them apart, the wet, rotten wood just kind of falls apart. So it actually works out good. So it was in my favor, waiting 25 years to take them apart. But now they're in the storage shed. Oh. The storage tank sheds, which are on the Lombard Slays. Okay, oh, well, in theory, on one steel one, one rotten one, and two sitting on the ground. Oh, look, that's four. Okay, all right. So we're going to not sure if we're going to do anything over there today. It'd be nice to get it done. Because I hate not finishing a project like my dad. He had like 250 cars in his collection or stuff in his collection. He never finished anything. How he had two kids, we don't know. Because you have to finish, yeah. 
Okay, there we go. So that's going to be nice once that is all cleaned up in there. And then we're going to put cat parts up on those docks or whatever, those shelves or whatever, eh? That way we can, they're up off the ground, but we're not putting them on pallets because after 10 years, the pallets rot. And then they're no good. Oops, I got the burps. Oh, <coughs> oh yeah. that was lame ass. Have a drink anyways. Okay, so it's pointless putting them on pallets. Oh God, I'm going to, uh, am I going to make it here? But this cleaning up the yard is giving us a lot of firewood. Firewood. Yeah, all these pallets are rotten. So now they're going into the wood stove. Yeah. So pretty smart thinking. Clean up the yard, get your wood for the fireplace or the wood stove. Yeah. So we'll get that all tidied up. Put all the cap parts on that. Then if I die, the cap parts are worth nothing. The boat docks or whatever, scrap metal. So then they can just ship everything as scrap, right? Because nobody's going to come to the end of the world to get old cat parts. We know that. They'll buy it in Kansas where it's in better shape. Okay, there we go. We did a complete circle, kind of, sort of, maybe. I don't know. I forgot. Oh, memory space. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's get to work and get do something today. Well, I'm not sure yet. We're having a hard time waking up this morning because when it's raining... We have a hard time waking up because when it's sunny, we want to work, get things done. But when it's raining, it's like we're in snooze mode. Yes. And the staff was a little stiff and sore from shoveling all that sand. But she did it. Yes, she did it. She didn't have to wait on a boyfriend, a sugar daddy or anything like that. Or the old guy, me, to help her. She just did it. Run the hoe, haul the stuff with a quad, get it done. That's the way she does it. All right, I better go. The boss is coming. Okay, it's a rain day in the kingdom, but we have to keep working. I should be in the house doing paperwork or on the computer or working on the 25th book or something, but getting the yard clean and organized. Plus, I have a mess here like you wouldn't believe, so working in a drizzly rain will work out good. And even I put on a fresh layer of duct tape onto my shoes so the plasma cutter doesn't eat them. You know, they're expensive at $15 now at Walmart. They used to be 5 bucks 10 years ago. All right, let's get to work. The staff is doing laundry today, so she'll be doing the household items instead of out here enjoying the weather with me. Okay, lunchtime in the kingdom flag exercise is relaxing. There's not enough breeze to chase the sand flies away. I don't know if you can see them in the screen here in front of the camera. They're just buzzing around. I got the bug off on, or better off of the F off, trying to keep them out from under my glasses, in my ears, under my hat, and in my face. But we were able to cut up this here. So it's going to rain, plus getting the water hose out to smoke the, kill the, some of the smoke here attracts them. They're just unreal. That's why people don't like coming up here, especially. And I didn't even put speed stick on today. All right, I'll try and walk and talk. Over here, we have all the ski runners. Look at that. They're all lined up for when we do a protection run for the next generation of skis. Probably not in my lifetime. Oh, well, let's go have some lunch. Okay, this is a homemade sleigh or a bush-made sleigh because it's kind of parts and pieces put together. All right, one of the drawbacks is it's not a skinny ski. Somebody made, uh, how would you say, a ski runner that's a little too wide. Okay, so both of them are the same. And also too, oh, a little breezy here. They put the pivots up top here, okay. But also too, it goes to show that just that the chain or the cross chain or the power to the sleigh is not through the skis like they don't pull on the skis here this chain here goes back to the bunk okay back there all right so that's what you're pulling on not the skis okay there's the lumbar pulls on the skis and these cross chain ones pull on the bunk so the skis free float i don't know if we can hear that Slight breeze and we got all them sand flies, which I'm eating. All right, I better get back to work. Okay, me and the thousand and one sand flies think this is a better view. So this is the ski rod or the bunk rod that gives the power to the bunk. Okay, so it went through the wooden bunk and it was bolted there. You can see somebody was learning how to weld or just cranked it up and using AC power back in the day. But this here is the slot. You have to have slop in here. And then the ski just free floats along. So it just kind of rides along. So no power is to the ski. It's to the ski bunk. And then the skis can free float along the terrain. And these are the cross chains that went to the first bunk, which was hooked to the hitch. Okay, it gives me great pleasure to cut this one up because I never liked this sleigh. 
It's a bunt pole design. So the sleigh hooks up with a pole in the middle and then the chains hold it or whatever. It's an abortion, okay? And you can see that the chains and the rods hold the sleigh all together, okay? Not the skis, okay? So this gives you an idea. So hopefully this will be uh, about an hour to clean up this mess and get something salvageable out of it. But it was fun to drag out of the pile because it kind of rotten and fell apart. And we're keeping the home fires burning here for all the sand flies. Okay, five o'clock in the kingdom and we're gonna keep going. A little bit of overtime, but this is going good. We're down to the nitty gritty of the last of the sleigh parts. Oh wait, that was a country western band in the late 1980s. Oh yeah, and they sang Cadillac Ranch. I think it was a remake or redo. Oh well, the memories. Okay, if we work a little late tonight, we'll be done this. I mean, done for good. And then we can put caterpillar parts or cat parts, IH cat parts on top of these uh, boat docks here. So we got some loose ends that are falling off as we drive away, but it's looking good. We're very pleased. Okay, six o'clock in the kingdom, man. We decide we're going to bang off this rocker sleigh. Yes, a rocker sleigh. Uh, they're rare up here, but it's a nice design of the rocker going back and forth, except for the bolt holes kind of take up all the material out of the bunk or whatever, the wooden bunk. So over here, I don't know, there's not much we can see here. But by the time you put all the holes in to bolt the rocker plates on, there's no strength left in the uh, wood or the bunk. Okay, one of the first sleighs I did was the welding sleigh, because you got to have your tools with you at all times. This is a rocker slayer, rocker bunk, as we call it, okay? We've welded it into place so it's got some structure, but it lets the ski rock back and forth. It's good design, very sturdy in the bush, even on rough terrain, so we're very pleased with it, but it's basically useless when it's on the wooden bunk. Okay, here's the second uh, rocker sleigh, and gives you an idea how many bolts are in uh, the wooden bunk here. So there's three there, and then we have some other ones going through. So there's not much strength left when you start uh, putting too many holes in it. So when it goes, uh, it kind of breaks apart really quick. But this sleigh is well worn out, as you can see by the ski runner here. Looks like it went down the highway or gravel. They forgot about the snow and ice. But we'll bang this one apart. And then I think we're done for the day and done with this smoky stuff. And the sand flies can find somebody else to torment. Maybe my ex-wife? Okay, just about 8 o'clock and we did it. All these sleigh parts are caught up. Of course, the last rocker sleigh bunk, the one corner was still good oak. I had to cut and beat and cut and cut and beat. That was good wood. But we got it apart and I'm very pleased. Okay, on the rocker sleigh bunk thingy bobs, look at how much wood is removed when then add the bolt holes just so they can bolt the rocker part on. So that was the demise of the, uh, the sleigh, and it would just break apart or <laughs> rot away. Okay, we got some more sleigh parts in here. I was just throwing them up. The staff can organize it later. But you can see the oak is still good anywhere there was no holes drilled or cracks. Like, that was very good. Like, that's nice stuff to cut with the skill saw. We got some ski runners. We got lots of bunks. Yes, I'm old and I'm throwing them up here. Okay, that rocker sleigh actually had solid shafts going across to join the skis. Usually it's short little stubby shafts about this long. Okay, the wind's gotten up. I've never seen that before, but we'll repurpose this on the sleighs we build because we'll just cut them shorter. So this part's here we have to take apart because we don't use any cabling or anything like that. So we'll sort this out, put the cable clamps in the shed for next time and throw the cables out because they're pretty rotten. Also, too, we'll be leaving the garden hose out, string strung out, because if I'm out, look on the cameras and I see some smoldering happenings out here, I can just run out in my jammies and water it down real quickly, so we don't have a fire like in Whoville last night. The kids set another garage on fire, so that's three in three weeks. They go running pretty good. There we go. It only took two days, which totally surprised me. I figured I'd be a month farting around, cutting and fitting and cleaning and but uh, just that would be a, just a nightmare breaking this stuff apart but we got lucky with the plasma cutter being a piece of shit it actually cut the bolts the stuff was more rotten than i anticipated but now it's looking good now we can put some caterpillar parts and ih cat parts on this boat dock here 
Okay, the flag exercise is kind of in a natural state. The sand flies are unreal. We're going to walk the dogs, drink some beer. The sand flies will be upset and they'll have to go find somebody else to torment, like my ex-wife. Okay, let's go get this day done. We did it and I'm hurting. All right, look at them go, the flag exercise. All right, we've had enough. Let's go drink some beer and we'll talk to you later.